everybody. Hallelujah. Make some noise for Jesus. Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for November the 1st, 2020. Hallelujah. He's been good to us. Amen. Brought us through this year. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. East Gaston, Alabama community. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. You can reach us. And you can. This can be viewed on Facebook at N New Liberty Tabernacle of Praise Assembly of God. I'm going to say that again. This can be viewed on Facebook at New Liberty Tabernacle of Praise AOG. And it can also be viewed on YouTube at NLTOP Gaston. Amen. So you're welcome to join in with us as we lift and praise the name of Jesus because he is worthy to be praised. Amen. And God is in the midst. God is in the midst. Amen. Are you looking for a blessing today? I'm looking for a blessing today. Not only today, but every day. Amen. Because God is in charge. We want to uh, our scripture for this morning is For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves for your service, for Jesus' sake. Second Corinthians 4 and 5. Again, amen, we know our mission and our ministry. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. 2 Corinthians 4 and 5. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Let us stand before you today. We want to say happy birthday to some very special people. And if I don't call your name and I don't know your name, amen. And if this is your birthday week, we want to wish you happy birthday too. To Jocelyn Z Douglas, uh, her birthday is tomorrow, November the 2nd. Olusina Oliwali, it's November the 5th. Sarita Washington, her birthday is November the 6th, 5th, excuse me. Bessie Barnett is having a birthday, November the 7th. And Ronald Day, November the 7th. Happy birthday to you. Many blessings to you, amen? Praise God. And at this time, we're going to we're going to move right on up and wait. And uh, our speaker today, he's going to come and he's going to bless us at this time in his own way. Make some noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, your word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I dare you to take just a few seconds and let God not only hear your horn, but let him hear your voice. Come on, everybody. Lift your voice like a trumpet and give the Lord great praise. He, he's worthy of it. He deserves it. Come on, you can do better than that. If you're under the sound of my voice, give God. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name and we give your name praise. Pray with me real quick, Father. We thank you. God, we thank you for your spirit. God, we thank you that you're most here even now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for your will and your way here. Father, I pray, Lord, for those that are under the sound of my voice, for those that are dealing with oppression, for those who are dealing with circumstances that seem to be out of their hand. God, we thank you for your word power flowing freely in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. God, we have prayed that the oppressed go free in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you for binding up every spirit of depression. Everything that's not like you, God, we give you glory. We thank you for dismantling the work of the enemy. Thank you for undoing what the enemy has done. God, we give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Now, God, as always, Lord, I ask, Lord God, that you would arise and demonstrate your power. Cause men's hearts to be changed by the preaching of your gospel with great signs and wonders to follow. God, knowing that you're well able, we give your name, praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, after 18 years of, being, of, of not being able to be here on a Sunday morning, it feels good to be in Gaston, Alabama this morning. Hallelujah. Thank God for the spirit of liberty that flows through this house. I want to make sure uh, that I respect the time, but definitely I want to give God praise uh, in a day that we are losing so many fathers. I thank God that the Lord has allowed our fathers in the gospel to be with us. Help me praise God for Apostle Melvin Crook. Lady Crook, help me praise God for Pastor Simmons, Lady Shella Simmons, Elder Young, and as they say at my church, for all of those that are protocol but don't know the call, thank God, good to see you, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank God for my biological parents who I love dearly. They keep me laughing. They keep me on my feet, and sometimes it seems like the roles are reversed, trying to keep them in that house. They want to go all the time. But I thank God for my parents who keep a very close eye on me, and, and it, you've made it easy for them to do this morning, so I thank God for them as well. Let's go very quickly to the Word of the Lord. Let's go very quickly to the Word of the Lord. I don't know if you got your Bibles with you or, or, or you know your, your devices, but let's move very quickly. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. And I want to uh, just deal with a few verses there, and then I'm going to get out of your way very quickly. Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 23, it says this, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the innermost part of the prison. And he made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately the doors were opened. And everyone's, somebody shout everybody's. Everyone's bands were loosed. Let me go back to one, just one particular verse and then we're going to move very quickly. And that's verse 25 where we're going to take our subject. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the Lord brought me here for this one line, this one part. And the prisoners heard them. And the prisoners heard them. And the prisoners heard them. I want to talk to you for the next fleeting moments from this topic. Somebody shout, and the prisoners heard them. And so as I was studying and preparing to come and share this time with you, uh, even for the past few weeks, the Lord has been dealing with me about the power of testimony. Somebody shout testimony. testimony. When we understand what a testimony is, it is a type of assurance that is based and linked up with an experience. A testimony or a testament is often linked to a witness and it is used as a tool of persuasion. How do we know it? Because many of us, before we ever got saved, before we were ever called into the ministry, before we ever picked up a Bible, some of the first experiences that we received was the testimony of God through somebody else. Uh, I remember even as a young musician, as a young musician, I remember playing at different churches and even at this church Apostle Crook, we used to have testimony service. We had to cut out testimony services because it looked like over time people forgot how to effectively testify. But we used to have testimony services and during testimony services, we we used to have uh, testimony songs. Y'all remember how testimony services used to go? Uh, if, if your church was real organized, they had rules.
rules. If you're going to sing, don't testify. And if you're going to testify, don't sing. And when you testify, tell on it and don't try to tell it all. Y'all remember how this goes. They used to have testimony songs. They used to sing songs like, yes, God is real. And they used to testify and sing songs like, Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being so good to me. They used to sing songs like, Jesus is a way maker. They used to sing songs like, out of all I've been through, I still, 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 still have joy. They used to sing songs like, I get joy when I think about what the Lord has done for me. And so it becomes uh, it becomes crystal clear that that testimony in the life of a believer is a critical thing. Somebody shout, it's a critical thing. It's a critical thing that we testify. We see this even this in scripture. We got reminders in scripture. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 11, it gives us the formula for overcomers. It says that when we get in trouble as believers and when we get into a fight that seems to be out of our hand, he says that if you're going to overcome this thing, you've got to do it how? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Somebody say it's important that you testify. As a matter of fact, I don't know who's in this parking lot and I don't know what type of conditions I'm looking at or speaking to this morning but I'm going to back away from this and give you 45 seconds to testify over the remaining months of this year go ahead take you 45 seconds and decree it and declare it I can't hear you Zion not just with your car horn but you your voice. God, I thank you that every provision is going to be made. I thank you that you're going to keep my body well. I thank you that the blood is applied to my family and my children. Come on, saints. Testify. Testify the goodness of the Lord. Testify what you know the Lord will do. I can't hear you. Take 10 more seconds. Everybody. Come on. I hear you. I hear you. I'm going to give you a few more seconds. Testify and let God know. Now let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the sick say my body is well because of what the Lord has done. Tell somebody testify. Yeah, there are different perspectives for testimony. There's different perspectives for testimony. One perspective that we see is the faith perspective of testimony. Now, now this type of perspective, this means that I have the ability to testify while looking at the threat of evil. In other words, I hold fast to what the Lord has given me and I hold fast to what the Lord has declared over my life. And even though I'm looking at something that seems like it may cause a threat to the destiny that God has given me, I'm looking at the trial and I'm already testifying. Yeah, you look dim, but God's going to bring me through it. Yes, yes, yes. Tell somebody it is the faith, the faith perspective. We see the faith perspective of testimony in the life of Abraham in Romans, uh, I believe it's chapter 4. Yes, Romans chapter 4 and verse 21. It was Abraham that the Lord made a promise to and because of the promise of the Lord, Abraham was filled with expectation. But look at what happened in the text. There was amount of time that elapsed. So now neither time nor the condition of Abraham's body is on his side. But he had the faith perspective of testimony down packed. How do we know it? Because in scripture, when it seemed that it was not going to happen, the Bible says that Abraham looked and he said, being fully persuaded, I am convinced that if God said it, he's going to do what he said. Tell somebody you need to activate the faith perspective. The faith perspective. The faith perspective. Some of you are going to have to use the faith perspective even in the next coming weeks because the Lord will open a door for you. But just like in scripture, he will open a great door for you. But sometimes there will be many adversaries. And when you come against that type of trial, Pastor Young, you can't sit around looking and sounding the fear and say, well, oh, well, I guess I'll just give up and maybe I'll just do this next time. Shut up with that defeated foolishness. You got to open your mouth and say, you know what? The trial is great, but God is greater. The fight is big, but God is bigger. And I am fully persuaded that if God said, who am I talking to out here? If God said it, I'm crazy enough to believe that God's going to do what he said. Somebody open your mouth and give him glory in here. 
we got the faith perspective. We got the faith perspective. The other perspective of faith that I want to talk to you about is the endurance perspective. Sometimes the endurance perspective is also looked at as the sustained perspective. Now, what this perspective does is, is that I'm not looking at the trial, brother, afar off. When we look at the endurance perspective, that means that I'm in the fight right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, that you in a financial dilemma right now. You in a family crisis, right? Don't y'all sit up here and look. I, I'm I'm not setting the house. Y'all sitting here looking at me like you ain't going through nothing. Yeah, I'm in the fight of my life right now. I'm holding on to God with everything that I have. But what the endurance perspective of faith does, Pastor Simmons, is that it says that even though I am in a mess, tell somebody it's a mess, it's a mess. It's a go on and admit it. You ain't got a lot to kick it. It's a mess. You know it is. You know it and I do too. Tell somebody it's a mess. What the endurance perspective says is that even though I'm in a mess right now, I got enough faith and confidence in God to decree and declare and testify something different than what I'm in right now. Tell somebody you need the endurance perspective. You need the endurance perspective. Now, the irony in it is this. The irony in it is this. I know that we would love to think that anointed, chosen, favored individuals of God that we don't go through anything and we don't have to face any trials and we don't have to go through any circumstances or dilemmas. But can I tell you can I tell you that I've had to look over my life and I've had to sometimes just laugh. I had to just crack up laughing. I'm telling you, I'm talking about the type of laugh that get down in your side and your side start hurting. I had to laugh because I had to admit, Sister Valerie, I had to admit that sometimes I'm the favorite of the Lord and the same doors that open because of this anointing and this favor is the same type of anointing that has thrusted me into trouble. Yeah, I'm the only one has ever been through that? Yeah, I've gotten into some spaces where it looked like the same anointing that opened up favor occasionally threw me into a fiery furnace. But can I tell you what the good news is about it is? Is that God has a way of delivering even in the midst of an unfavorable place. Tell somebody God's got a way of delivering. He got the way of, he got a way of getting glory in unfavorable and strange places. And so when we look at the text and I'm moving very quickly when we look at the text early up in chapter 16 of Acts it is evident that these men are anointed it's evident that they operate under a heavy anointing because as they are preaching and as they are ministering they do so with great results uh, uh, they, they do so with great results they, they see that there's great and massive deliverance happening and they there's an undoing of demonic systems and barriers oh yeah people are getting delivered and converted. Tell somebody great anointing. Great. They're doing so with great results, but because of this anointing, you see a little farther down in Acts 16, because of this anointing, the door of favor is opened up to them. They are granted with great access and the anointing that God has placed on their life has paved the way. Now you see that in verse 15, but look what happens in verse 18. When you get to verse 18, you notice that the same anointing that got them access in verse 15 landed them into prison in verse 18. Lord, are y'all praying with me? And so the funny thing about it is, is here's where most of us have the issue because it seems as if, if I worship God and I love God and I am God's chosen and I'm God's anointed, it seems like I would not be the one, you would not be the one to go through certain circumstances. Anybody ever look at some of the stuff that God has kept you in and God has allowed you to walk through and you had to say, I don't remember going through any of this as long as I was in the world. Yeah, I don't remember being broke like this when I was doing my own thing. And, and, and it's one thing, it's one thing when we acknowledge that God would allow us to be in it. That's one thing, Pastor Young. But the thing that ultimately knocks us off of our feet is when we acknowledge that this God that has the power to de immediately deliver us and he chooses to leave you in it. Are you serious? Oh my goodness. Anybody ever say, God, what's up with that? What's, 
what, what's going on? And I, be, I begin to seek the Lord and I begin to ask God, Lord, why is it that there are so many of your people that's going through? So many of your people dealing with divorce. So many of your people dying, not just from coronavirus. There's so many of your people who are suffering. So many of people are coming to church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday night after Wednesday night, and they are still depressed. God, what is it? And he began to deal with me about the implications of a trial. The first thing that he said to me, Dad, the first thing that he told me, he says that when you are in God, that a trial is never just a trial for a believer. But you've got to understand that when you are in a fight that seems to be out of your hand, one of two things are happening. Number one, either God is wanting to reveal another side of himself to you, or God is revealing himself through you. And that's what we see here in the scripture. God is revealing himself through what Paul and Silas are going through. Tell somebody, I want God to reveal himself through me. I want him. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know it don't feel good. It don't look good. And if you said that you liked it, I call you a liar. But I want God. I want God to reveal himself through me. Tell somebody, say glory, be revealed, be revealed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but can I can I can I just tell you why you can't quit? Can I can I tell I know the rope has burned in your hand, even those of you who work in ministry and you've been working and toiling, and it seems like God has forgotten about you. It seems like God is supplying something through you that He hadn't even sent to you yet. But can I tell you why you are not allowed to quit? Yeah, yeah, you have no idea how many people are gonna get free from the revelation of God through your life. You I wish that I could show you how many people were going to be delivered by watching you come through the thing that God has been taking you through. I wish that I could show you how some of your sons and your daughters that seem to not be listening to you right now, they're going to experience another side of God because they said, if my mother and my father can walk through this and not lose their mind, not have to be checked out of an insane asylum not gain weight and lose hair and look oh yeah God kept you and you look good ain't that a testimony if God can do that for them he can do that for me somebody shout it one more time glory be revealed I wish you understood that there's an entire nation that's attached to your testimony I need somebody in these cars I need somebody not with your horn but use your mouth I need you to open your mouth and worship God if you know this truth that God can get the glory out of a strange place. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Use your mouth. If you if you can if you can recognize that God can get the glory out of a strange place, I beg you to throw back your head real big and bless the Lord. Where you are. Where you are, where you are, it is not just for you, but this strange place is setting us up for massive revival. So now we see in the text that these are godly men. They're godly men that God's chosen, that God's anointed. And they are thrusted from a place of favor into a prison. But he allows chosen people to be in an unfavorable place for prisoners to hear. Somebody shout, and the prisoners heard them. What if I told you that this pandemic may have caught the United States of America by surprise around the middle of March, but God who was infinite in wisdom he marked the beginning of this pandemic before we knew about it. And whether it looks like it or not, this thing has an expiration date. If I was at home in my own living room, I would have forgot y'all was here and went to dancing. What if I told you that while we are itching and biting at the bits to get back into our worship services and get back into these buildings where the people that need to hear this gospel are not coming right now, no way. What if, what if I told you that God will sometime un uproot us from our place of comfortability just so prisoners can hear? 
Somebody shout and the prisoners heard them. I came to announce to Gaston, Alabama and surrounding areas, wherever you may be watching this, that though it seems like it's out of control, though it seems like it is utmost chaos, tell somebody God is still in control. The Lord says that I am setting us up for massive revival. And I've allowed you to be uprooted from your normal, your regularly scheduled programs. And so you're out here and you're socially distanced. And you're out here and you, you got your mask on and you're sitting in your cars. And a lot of us ain't even been able to embrace and show love that we like we would normally like to do it. But the Lord says I've uprooted you and placed you in a strange place just so prisoners can here. That's the reason why your testimony is important. You are out here and your mission is to lift up the name of Jesus. And you're out here in the parking lot and there are prisoners who are bound in addiction. Prisoners who are bound with oppression. Prisoners who are bound with depression. Prisoners who don't know how they're going to make ends meet. Prisoners who go to somebody else's church down the street going home and they still want to commit suicide. God put you out here so that prisoners can hear and he says to the church he says I've uprooted you for a reason I've interrupted you for a reason he says but even though you're in a strange place what I need from the church of Jesus Christ what I need from the body of Christ what I need from the kingdom of God he says praise me and let the prisoners hear he says open your mouth in the open heaven and let every prisoner hear that I'm still a way maker let the prisoners hear that I'm still a deliverer let the prisoners hear that I'll bring you out let the prisoners hear that I'm still a deliverer I'm still a strong tower I'm still the unmoved mover and I wasn't weak yesterday I'm not weak today and when you get tomorrow I will already be there somebody say let the prisoners hear them so as I go to my seat the Lord told me to come back and tell everybody under the sound of my voice he told me to tell you get out and testify he said get out and praise me he said get out and lift up your voice and make sure that while you are lifting me up not somebody in the car with you and tell them say let the prisoners hear let the roll your window down wave at somebody across the parking lot and say you need to be heard ma'am let the prisoners hear you sir those of you that's been redeemed by the mighty hand of God he says let the prisoners know that I am still a deliverer so he says testify he says testify he says testify I know you don't feel like it I know that you're in a strange place sometimes it looks like we are in the middle of a war zone but Pastor Simmons can I tell you what the Lord said to me he said you feel like it's chaotic and it is but the part that you need to understand is that it's controlled chaos it's controlled because it can't go no farther than God allows it to go it can't do nothing more than you than God allows it to do tell somebody it's controlled chaos it's still under God's control I'm just trying to give you a reason why you need to let the prisoners hear I'm just trying to give you a reason why you should testify as I get ready to go to my seat I need to I need to let this be known before I put the microphone down the Lord told me he said don't only tell them to testify he said but make sure you tell them how to testify I said Lord what are you saying I said these folk been testifying since I was a knee baby oh yeah I I used to hear them first giving under the God who's the head of my life, saints, ministers, and friends. Yeah, he said, no, no, no. He said, I need you to tell them how to testify. You understand, uh, Evangelist Gloria, that the Pastor Gloria, that the reason why we had to cut testimony service out of our services is because people used it for a soapbox, and people used it for an opportunity to be depressed, and people used it for an opportunity to self-promote. So the Lord told me to give you a few nuggets to take with you to make sure that when you testify that you're doing it right. He said, number one, he 
says be loud tell somebody be loud be loud when you testify in other words break your silence you don't have time to be coming out here being cute the Lord says be loud not only loud in your volume sister Becky he says but be loud in your faith we see on CNN every day the numbers are going up but be louder than the numbers be louder than the pandemic be louder than social injustice somebody throw your head back and say be loud second thing he told me to tell you is be authentic the Lord said authenticity has to come back to the house of God he says to me he says that the, that the kingdom of God is no longer making room for who you pretend to be he says be authentic don't come out here acting like you ain't never smoked any weed don't come out here acting like you ain't never had a drink don't come out here acting like you ain't never had a one night stand you lying spirit you oh yes but be authentic tell the truth about where you came from tell the truth about how God delivered you you see the significance in this story is and y'all I got to hurry to my seat the significance in this story is is that Paul and Silas they were authentic in what they were doing they said to they said with their praise and their worship that I'm in the same place as you I'm dealing with the same conditions that you are I'm looking at the same prison cells that you are but yet I made a different decision while I am here that I'm not going to sit here and mope about where I am but in the midst of a prison I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help all oh, my help all oh, my help I'm waiting on three of you all of my help comes from the Lord but the decision brought a full circle miracle because when you look in the text when they praise and sing praises to God Lady Shelly the Lord didn't just deliver Paul and Silas but he delivered everything around them can I tell you why you gotta be louder you gotta be authentic because when you give your testimony the Lord's not only gonna fix your situation sister Patrice but he's gonna fix every single stronghold that's been going on around you tell somebody I got to do it for more than just me this praise got my family line name on it this praise got my brothers and my sisters name on it I got some nephews and some nieces and I need God to interrupt some cycles tell somebody be loud and be authentic you got to praise them got to praise them got to praise them got to praise them I'm gonna give you five more seconds give them the best praise you can so the last thing that he told me to tell you about your testimony he said, be loud, be authentic. But the last thing that he told me, he said, tell the church to be on fire. Oh, yeah, when you go back, you need to have what you, you need to really have it. You need to have it like you say you have it. He says, you need to be on fire. The way that you be on fire, number one, you got to be reminded. And I know that some of us like to sweep our past under a rug, but he says, you need to be reminded. Tell somebody there's a blessing in remembering the Lord. There's a blessing in remembering. I am your way maker. There's a blessing in remembering that I'm the one that lifted you up when you were in despair. No, no, it wasn't your job. It wasn't your job. It wasn't your degree. It was me. It was me. All of tell somebody God that did it. The reason why I'm in here and I'm able to add two plus two together and know that it equals four. God did it. The reason why I'm not counting on my fingers and toes and talking to imaginary friends and waiting on an answer back. Tell somebody God did it. God, God kept my my, my God kept me from going under. God kept me from catching the case. Is that too real for some of y'all? Are y'all out here? God did it. He says, be loud, be authentic, and be on fire. There's a blessing in remembering the Lord. What blesses me so much about the children of Israel, they had they had this thing that they tend to do whenever they got in trouble and, 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 and the Lord brought them great victory. There was this trend that, they, that amongst the children of Israel that they would do. Uh, yeah, they would set up stones like Ebenezer. They would set up altars and they would say stuff like, hitherto have the Lord help me. They would set up altars and remember the last time that God brought me out. Can I ask y'all a question?
question when was the last time you took a good 30 seconds and remembered the point in your life where they should have been closing a box on you oh my god if you could go back and remember that I don't have to beg you to be on fire if you could just get attached to a memory that's all it takes tell somebody I only need three seconds to remember yeah I only need three seconds to remember how I shouldn't have graduated how I shouldn't have made it out of jail how I, sh how I should have been locked up still been on drugs how my credit should still match my shoe size but tell them it's of the Lord's mercy that we have not been consumed great is thy faithfulness tell somebody be on fire every chance you get don't come out here wiping mad out of your ass time after when I'm so tired and it's cold out here and I wish pastor let us go back in the church no boo fix your attitude you need to be grateful because you if I told the truth you shouldn't be here but tell somebody I got to be on fire every chance I get tell somebody be on fire and transfer it transfer fire Fire. All up and down is broad. Transfer fire. Transfer fire. Transfer fire. Until it burns up everything that's not like God. Not the Black Lives Matter fire. Not the fire of the riots. They have their place. But I'm talking about Holy Ghost. I'm talking about Holy Ghost fire. I'm talking about Holy Ghost fire. Transfer fire. Fire. Can you do it without a microphone? Come on, everybody, pray. Make sure that your fire is transferable. Every chance you get, send fire over to the west side of town. Send fire over into a tower. Send fire over into Glencoe. If you do it and you do it right, I promise you those addictions will start breaking. If you do it and you do it right, when you go back to the doctor, you're going to get another health report. Tell somebody, transfer fire. <laughs> And the prisoners heard them. The Lord has interrupted our normal and what we are used to. Because I believe, and I hate to say it like this because I'm not a fussy person, but the truth is just the truth. I believe that many places across the body of Christ, the Lord got tired of us being anointed and only using our anointing on each other. Everybody wants a microphone and a title. Everybody wants to pastor. Everybody wants to step out of, bound, out of bounds and they want to be recognized. You don't need a microphone in your hand to transfer fire. I walk up and down the aisle at Kroger grocery store and I bump into somebody that looks a little heavy and I say, you know God is good. Sometimes they look at me weird because they serve other gods and sometimes they get with me. But either way it go, every chance I get, every opportunity I have, I'm going to transfer fire. Look at somebody and tell them your testimony is important. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you've had to endure. But your testimony is important. It's important that people see you praising God. And I'm not talking about that little cute stuff that we do. Sometimes you need to get loose and give God all you have. Don't complain about no knee problems. I believe that if you gave God a real praise, that you could go running tomorrow and not feel it. Yeah, you're going to get old one day and your knees go. The devil is a liar. You're going to find me at 70 and I'm still going to be praising God. Tell somebody, give your testimony every chance you get. I got this little song that, 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 that I brought. I got this little song that I brought. And I asked Valerie to put it on. Because sometimes we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded that it was the Lord that brought us. It was the Lord that sustained us. It was the Lord that kept us. And I want you to know that if the Lord started you, if he started you and you were covered when it started, when did God become weak? When did he lose his power to perform? When did he lose his power to sustain you? Tell somebody you need to testify. Tell them you need to testify. Hallelujah. If he brought you this far, he'll take you all the way. Pump that up. Pump that up. Pump that up. Hallelujah. I just came to tell somebody, make sure you tell your testimony. God bless you, Saint. God bless you. So much hurt. I've experienced so much pain. He's always there. Oh, 
good. Come on, let me see you now. A Holy Ghost bump. A Holy Ghost bump. A Holy Ghost bump. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Transfer fire. Hey. Turn loud. I'm saved and I'm proud. Hey. Turn loud. I'm saved and I'm proud. Somebody say, say it loud. Come on, come on. I'm saved. They call it lighter, or whatever they call it. But it was easy to burn. And you bring it and you put it amongst the wet wood. Come on, somebody. If your wood was wet, it ought to be dry now. I said, if your wood was wet, if your shout was wet, if your praise was wet, if your testimony was wet, it ought to be on fire about now. Don't let the fire go out. Get in God's word. Get in God's presence. Believe God for your miracle. Believe God for your deliverance. You might be going through for somebody else, but I'm healing. I'm telling you, don't park there. Go through. I said, don't park there. Go through. Don't set up camp there. Go through. Somebody said, shake the devil off. 
Alright, you just got free. You was free enough to praise, you just got free. If you was free enough to raise your hands, you just got free. Don't go back into captivity. Don't go back to Egypt. Don't go back to Lodabar. Don't go back. But stay free. Keep your hands up. Keep your mouth full of praise. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you for the word. Thank you, minister, for the word, praise God. Thank you, Lord. You knew exactly what we needed. Sanctify this ground, holy, up and down East Broad, up and down uh, 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 Hope Street, praise God, up and down Megan, praise God. The word has gone forth. The atmosphere is broke up. It had to be broke up to get that heaviness off of you so you could lift your hand. I see some people get out of the car. I see some people throw their hands up. I see some people get into a little dance. Somebody said, praise God. The devil said you wasn't going to never shout no more. But you shout now. He said you were never going to praise no more. He said, why are you praising? Tell him because he's God. And beside him there is no other. Somebody said, praise him. Don't let this election depress you. I don't care how it come out. God's still in charge. I don't care how it comes out. God made the decision based on what we need. Somebody say hallelujah. Vote your convictions. Vote how you, how you prayed and how God has showed you. But don't worry about the outcome. Because in the end, we win. Somebody say glory. I'm talking to some victorious, overcoming saints of God who don't depend on how the election go this way or that way. I'm not finna get mad, go shoot nobody. I'm not finna go break in no stores. I'm gonna go praise and do a crazy praise. And I'm just gonna believe God. Somebody say hallelujah. Of one way or the other, praise God. I am an overcomer. And, I, and this too shall what? I said this too shall what? I said, this too shall what? Hey, forgetting those things that are behind me. I'm pressing where? Somebody looking where? Somebody looking where? Give me some words. Looking where? I'm looking forward. We believe towards the victory that God has for me. Coming out of Lodabar. Out of Egypt. Low thinking, low living. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. As we take communion as our apostle Tom, praise God. We thank you here at New Liberty Tabernacle of Praise for giving us your time, for, for being here with us today. All of those that heard the word, I ask you to respond to the word in the name of Jesus, to the glory of God. Amen.